Welcome to another Game Salad tutorial. What I'm going to do in this tutorial, and I might do a couple more on this subject, I'm going to demo how to create some particle effects. And let me show you exactly what we're going to do in this video. We're going to start out by creating a basic explosion, which is going to be that. It's I click my mouse button in this case, and it sets the explosion off, and it's just a bunch of particles that explode out from the center of the screen and fade away as they progress. So we're going to start out by creating that, which is pretty basic. And then we're going to move on to a more fancy or more deluxe version of the explosion. And you'll see there's a dust cloud kind of in the middle. Those particles fly out. And then there's also some shock waves, a couple different colored shock waves that come out of there. So that's what we're going to create in this video, a basic and a fancy explosion using particle effects. Now the reason I want to do some tutorials on particle effects is I think it seems like people often have trouble working with that behavior, maybe because it's so complex looking. It's not really complex once you get into it, but there are a lot of options and maybe people just have a hard time figuring out what they all mean and what they all do. So hopefully we're going to take care of that today. So I'm going to create a new project here and I'm working in the Macintosh version of this. Everything I do in this Mac version of Game Salad today should still work in the Windows version and also in the online web version. I believe the particle effect is exactly the same in all three. So I'm going to start a new project. I'm just going to make it the iPad portrait, I'm sorry, iPad landscape. There we go. Let me fill the screen with it. I'm going to start from scratch instead of using this project I just demoed to you. I think if we start from scratch, you'll get the most benefit that way. I'm just going to go into the initial scene. First thing I want to do is bring in our resources we're going to be using. I'm going to make those all available, of course. You can find a link to those in the description of the video below. So first let's load in some images. We have three different images we're going to use. In this there's an explosion particle, which you can see it's... All these are going to be grayscale. And this is just basically a dot with a soft feathered edge. We're going to use that shock wave. And then there's also a particle we're going to use as the smoke or the dust area in the more deluxe explosion. So I'm going to highlight all three of those and just bring those in. Now just for fun I'm going to add some sounds as well. So let's bring those in. Just makes them, brings them to life a little bit. I'm going to import those as a sound. And I did forget to bring in one image. Let's bring in the background, which is not important to the particle effects. It just gives them a little context as being set in space. So let's drag this background in here. Just get that established. Drop it right on here so there's some context for our explosions. And there's going to be nothing to that. It's just an image. So let's create an actor. For our first particle effect, I'm going to call this basic explosion. And there we go. I'm going to double click that. I want to turn the alpha channel of this or the visibility of it down to zero because I don't want this actor actually showing on screen. All we're going to want from this actor is to see the particles that it's going to spawn. So I'm going to turn that alpha down to zero, and then I'm going to add a particle effect behavior. That is under particles. In the online version or the web version of Game Salad, they've changed the name of this behavior from particles to emit particles. So if you're looking for this in the list in the web version, look under E for emit particles instead of just particles. Let's put this actor on the screen. 
There it is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this. Before we're done with this, I'm going to set it up so whenever I click the mouse button, it's going to set the explosion off right from the center point here. So I'm just going to drag that to cover the whole screen. Certainly if you were making a game, for example, this is kind of a space, or I'm thinking of it anyway as an explosion in a space game where maybe a ship is hit or an asteroid is shot, something like that. So that moment when the ship is supposed to explode, you would use in your game whatever actions to set the explosion off. In our case, in this tutorial, I'm just going to use a mouse click to set the explosion off. I'm just going to drop that there. Now let's see what the basic settings of the particle effect give us. And it's not a lot. This looks just like a line that's wavering, but what it's really doing is it's spawning a bunch of squares for a set period of time and then they're disappearing. Let's take a look at that real quick before we get into our actual building of the explosion. In the particle effect behavior, you have several tabs up here. There's a spawn rate, velocity and position, size, color, rotation, and then the image. If you don't bring in an image or add an image to this, you get a square pixel by default from Game Salad. So let me space these out a little bit. Let me make these move a little faster and you'll probably be able to see that we have little squares here. There they go. So now the particles are kind of shooting more off to the right and you can see that it's made up of squares. And that's just the default particle. Now what we're going to want to do for ours, let's change that image right away. I want to use the explosion particle image and that's that little dot. So now let's take a look and see how that's changed. Now we have a bunch of little dots spawning out of the middle here and just, you know, floating over to the right until they disappear. So again, let's look at this behavior here real quick. We've added the image, which is a dot. I've changed the speed that it moves at. That's under the velocity and position. It's moving at 200 pixels per second now. Now I could change the direction that that goes. It, it automatically, by default, is going to the right in Game Salad. If you wanted those particles to shoot up, you would change your direction to 90. And now, those particles are moving in an upward direction. You could certainly have them move, let's say, at a 45 degree angle. So you could use particles for lots of things. We're going to use it for an explosion today. You could also use it to make a trail, maybe from an actor. If we had a spaceship flying here, this could maybe be exhaust or some sort of trail. There's lots and lots of uses for particles, certainly a lot more than just explosions. So the spawn rate, let's look at that for a minute. This is the number of particles that it will try to spawn during this two second startup time. And then the particles will be alive or last on screen for two seconds. And that's all the default settings. So if I were to reduce this number of particles, let's say to five, we're gonna see a lot less here. There's not as many. And then there's only five on screen at one time until they start to disappear out here at the tail end, and then they respawn here at the beginning again. And of course, if I increase this to let's say 50, we're gonna see a lot more. We might end up seeing almost just a straight line of, of dots in here. So let's start building this explosion and you'll get a better feel for all of these different settings right here. So I'm going to name this first from just particles to red and green. And you'll see why I'm saying red and green once we get to the color tab. 
I'm going to leave the number of particles right now set to 50. We may change that. And I want these, because it's an explosion, I want these to all hit the screen pretty quickly. A lot quicker than just the two seconds that is the default time. So I'm going to reduce this to 0.3 and then I'm going to leave the particle lifetime as two seconds. Now in our velocity and position we're going to want to make a fair amount of changes to this. First of all let's look at the direction. Our explosion as you might recall had particles spewing out in every possible direction around a circle. So from zero to 360 degrees it had particles going in every direction. So what we want to do here for direction we don't want a set number for this. What I want to do is come in here and use a function. I want to use the random function and I'm going to set the minimum to zero and the maximum to 360. So for each particle, each time one spawns on screen, it could potentially go off in a different direction from 0 to 360 degrees. I want to make sure and make this relative to scene. Then I'm going to want these to fly a little faster. Again, it's an explosion. They should kind of project from the center of the explosion fairly quickly. So I'm going to try 300 in there. Now let's run this and see what happens actually. Let's see how this works. And I'm not clicking my mouse so you'll see they just spew out constantly from the center. But what they're doing is they're all spewing from one exact center point right there. There's no variation. This kind of ends up looking like you could start to get to a, what am I thinking, like a warp speed effect, something like that, with them all coming out of the exact same center point. So we want to change that. I want there to be some variation to that. And you can do that right here in the emitter offset. If you don't change this, they all just come right out from the zero point, the home point of the actor. So what I want to do with this is just add a little variation there. I don't want to add a whole lot, but just enough so it doesn't look like it's all coming out of one center point. So I'm going to make it from minus 10 to plus 10 pixels in the X direction and then also random minus 10 to plus 10 pixels in the Y direction. So that should mix that up a little bit. Let's see as they start coming. And you can see that now they're, they're not all from one exact center point. They're just a little bit off in there. And that's exactly what I wanted. So let's check the size of these. And this is the size that each of those particles will display as. The default is 15. Of course, if I reduce this, that's going to make them small. There they are. They're teeny tiny now. And of course, if you make it larger, they will be much larger. But again, what we can do in there, if we wanted to, is we could use a random number. I'm not going to randomize these. I'm going to put 12 in here. So they'll be a little smaller than the default, but not gigantic like that 50 was. But now what I do want to do is use this menu right here where it starts out as size does not change. What that means, of course, is that they stay the same size throughout their entire life on screen until they disappear out here at the edge. What I want to do is have them fade away or kind of cool off as though they were a spark that was fading away and cooling or disappearing to nothing as the transition happens. I'm going to reduce these down to one pixel and I want that to take the two seconds that is the lifetime of these particles. So it'll take their entire life on screen to reduce them from 12 pixels to one pixel before it disappears. Now you'll be able to see that as they move away from the center, they reduce in size 
until they get down to one pixel and then they finally disappear. So we're starting to get there now. We're starting to get this basic explosion down. Let's check out the color tab. And this is where when I said red to green, that's where this comes into play. I'm gonna pick their starting color as a red. And then just like in the size where you can change the size over a time period, you can also change their color over a time period as well. So I want this color to also change over the full two seconds of their life. Then I want to change them to a green as they transition away from the center of the explosion. So let's check that out. So they start red and then you'll see as they shrink down and cool off, they start to turn to a green out here where they're getting to be one pixel. Now there is a rotation tab here too. We're not going to be using this because our particles are a circle and there is no reason to rotate a circle. You wouldn't notice it rotating. But what you can do, in fact, let me turn this off and let's look real quick. I'm going to bring in a new particle behavior. Let me just set the speed to 200 like we had it. I'm going to leave the default image as nothing so it's a square. And then you'll be able to see this rotation. You can give each particle its own rotation to start with. So for example, if I put 45 degrees in here, you can see instead of squares, these now look like diamonds because it's a square that's been rotated 45 degrees. And if you used a random number in here, of course, you would end up with, if you said from zero to, to 360, you would end up with different rotations for each square. Let's just take a quick look at that. In fact, I'll just take zero to 90. Once you go 90 degrees, it's going to be a square again. So you can see they're all slightly different rotations. And another thing under the rotation tab, I'm going to change the initial rotation back to zero. But you can have them rotate at a speed if you wanted to. So let's say I wanted these to project out of the center and be rotating pretty quickly. You would put an angular velocity right in here. And then as they're projected, they rotate as they move on screen. That's pretty straightforward, I guess. I'm gonna delete that. We're not gonna need that. Let me turn this one back on. So this particle behavior is basically done. Our explosion is clearly not done, but this is a good start. Now what I'm gonna do, I want multiple particles of different colors so we have this set up as red to green. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to change the colors on this version of it. Let's make this version go from yellow to blue. I'm going to leave all the other settings the same and just change the color settings. There we go, there's yellow. Let's make this a blue. There we go. I'm gonna copy this again and make a third version of different colors. Let's make this one purple and orange. Again, I'm gonna leave all the settings the same except for the color. Do the starting color as a purple. There we go. And do the ending color as an orange. That looks good enough. 
not critical exactly what the colors are. Now let's look at this, see what we're getting on screen. So there we go, now we're starting to get some colors and some variation of something that could be an interesting explosion. Now I just have to make it act like an explosion. And this is something you definitely have to consider with your particles. You'll see when you just use a particle effect behavior, they will just run forever. There's nothing that's turning them on, nothing that's turning them off. They just keep going forever. So you have to control that some way, unless of course you want it to continue forever. If maybe you were making a fire or a torch or smoke something in your game and wanted that just to keep burning the entire time it's on screen, then you wouldn't need to do this. But what I'm going to do is set up an event to trigger this and then turn it off essentially when it's done. So I'm going to use a rule for that. I'm going to select these and put them in a rule. What I'm going to do with this rule is say when touch is pressed, that'll be when touch is pressed anywhere in that actor that I put on the screen, we're going to trigger these guys. Now there's still, I need a timer in here because they would still just trigger. Like if I were to click this, as long as I hold my mouse button down, it'll keep going. And then when I let my mouse button go, it turns off, which is a cool effect, but again, it's not the exact explosion we want. So I'm going to use a timer in here to control that. I'm going to set this timer up to be a four timer. I'm going to say four, three quarters of a second, 0.75. It's going to spawn these particles. I just drug three of those particle behaviors into this timer. I want to make sure and click run to completion. Now, there's nothing going on on screen yet. I haven't clicked the mouse button. Now, when I click this, we get the explosion particles exploding out from the center of the screen fading away as they get to the edge. And I think you could easily see if there were something that were shot here, a spaceship or an asteroid, like I said, something else. When you trigger that explosion, maybe with a collide, a collide between the bullet and the spaceship, you would trigger this for the 0.75 seconds. You would have a really convincing particle explosion there. Now, like I said, I just brought the sounds in just for the fun of it. Let's drag this sound in here, have it play a sound. That'll make it a little more, even more convincing. There we go. So that's not a bad particle effect explosion for just a few minutes time. Now let's dress that up a little bit. Let's make it fancy. I'm gonna take this actor and I'm gonna duplicate it. I will call this fancy explosion. And let's make a second scene. I'm going to copy this scene. And then I'm going to delete the basic explosion away and drag the fancy explosion in here. Of course, we haven't created the fancy explosion yet, but that's exactly what we're going to do now. Let me get that on screen. Let's get in there. I'm going to leave these particles that are in the timer. Let me close these up. I'm going to leave the three of these in here. We're going to use those exact same particles we've already created. Let's delete that sound and bring in the explosion fancy sound first. We'll put that up there. Now we're going to add some more particles to this to make it even cooler, even more fancy. So for the more fancy version of the explosion, let's start by adding the dust cloud that was in the center of the explosion. 
So that's going to be another particle, of course. Everything in here is going to be a particle effect except for the sound. Let's drag up particles up here. So let me put that under the sound. I want the sound to play first. I'm going to put these in order in here and you'll see what I mean by in order. But There's going to be multiple groups of particles and effects within this rule. So I'm going to call this particles smoke. So it's the smoke effect at the center of the explosion. First thing I want to do is load in the proper image for that. We're going to use this smoke image and it's just kind of this grayscale, dark and light, wispy image of smoke. Let's go to the spawn rate and get that set up. I'm going to leave the default number of particles as 20. I want this to have a quicker lifetime to display on screen and be gone faster than the spark particles that fly out. So I'm going to change the lifetime to just one second. I'm going to change its startup time to 0.2 seconds, which is just a little bit quicker than these particles we're starting up at. So this should appear on screen quickly and be gone pretty quick. Now let's adjust the velocity and position. All I'm going to change in here is the emitter offset. There's not really a direction. I'm actually going to change speed to zero because I don't want them moving in any direction. It's just going to put multiple copies of this image on top of each other in different, you'll see we're going to rotate it, in different rotations so it ends up looking like layers of smoky debris. So for the emitter offset I'm going to do that same random minus 10 plus 10. So there's some offset to this in the X and Y direction. go. For the size of these particles, I'm actually going to use a random number in here. So we'll get some that are large and some that are small. None are going to be that small. I'm going to make this between 80 and 100 pixels. So none are going to be tiny. They're going to be pretty sizable, but there will be different size versions of this smoke particle there. I also want the size to change. I want the duration of this change to be their lifetime, which is one second on screen that we set up in the spawn rate. And then in the target size, I'm also going to make that random. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these grow as though the smoke were coming out from the center of the explosion. So I'm going to set this to larger than the starting size, that it was 80 and 100. I'm going to make this 125 to 150. So the size will grow slightly over one second. Now in the color tab, I'm not going to change the actual color of these. I'm going to leave them the white or the grayscale image that they are. But what I want to do is make them almost transparent. So I'm going to give it a starting opacity or transparency of only 7%. So they're going to be very light. But when it stacks them on top of each other, you're going to start to see this smoke debris show up on screen. And I do want this to change. I want the color to change to a transparency of zero, which will fade them away completely for the one second of their life. Now let's take a look at the rotation tab. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a random value in here, like we did for those squares I brought on screen temporarily, and I'm going to do the same thing from 0 to 360. So these could be rotated in any direction while they're getting stacked on screen. 
Now let's see what happens with that. When I click this, in addition to the sparks now that we had before, we should see some smoke or debris show up here briefly, here in the center of the screen. And it is not showing there because I'm in the wrong scene. Now let's try it. There we go. So you'll see there's kind of a smoke cloud that appears and disappears at the center of that explosion. And that's looking fantastic. That is exactly what we want, but we're not done. That's the smoke and we have some particles, but remember we also had a shock wave. So we'll also want to add that. Before we add that shock wave, I do want to move a couple things here. I want to move this sound out of the timer, and I want to move this smoke out of this original timer, and I'm going to put it in its own timer. I want it to be controlled at a different time frame. What I'm going to do is say 4.4 4 seconds and then put the smoke in there. Click Run to Completion. And it should still look pretty much the same. There we go, we still got the smoke cloud. But the reason I'm doing that is there's gonna be some other timers in here. We're gonna have multiple groups of these behaviors. And I just want this to be separated out on its own. I'm also gonna rename that so I know what it is. I'm going to call this timer now phase one. So there's actually going to be two phases of sparks in shock waves, just to add a little more drama. So let's make the shock wave that's going to be part of phase one. So I'm going to drag another particle behavior into that timer that we already have established. This one right here for phase one. Let's pick our correct image. I want to use the shockwave image, which is that circle. Now the spawn rate of this, I literally only want one of these. So I'm going to put one particle in there. I want it to last a long time on screen, longer than the sparks or anything else. So I'm going to put a five in there for five seconds. And I also want it to start right away. So I'm going to put 0.1 second in here. So it'll throw this one ring on the screen immediately as soon as this particle effect starts. All I'm going to do in the velocity and position is change the speed to zero because I don't want this moving in any direction, up, down, right, left, at any angle on screen. I just want it to grow it in size so it expands out from the center of the explosion. We're going to do that right here in the size tab. I want it to start at zero, which is as small as you can get. And I'm going to change the size to extremely large, 1500. That should take it off the screen before it disappears. And I believe I've timed that out to take 1.5 seconds. We'll see if we need to adjust some of this stuff once we see it on screen. We can definitely do that. So I want to add some color to this shock wave. I want to start it as a yellow. I don't want it to have full alpha. So I'm going to start that at 75% so it's somewhat transparent. I don't know why my color shifted there. There we go. Take that back to 75. There we go. So yellow, 75%. Then I do want this color to transition. I'm going to fade it to a red and to 0% so it will fade away. I want that again to take the 1.5 seconds as it's growing on screen. Let me name this shockwave. Now let's see what we have. That should show up. 
Make sure I'm in scene two. There we go. So we're getting our smoke particles. We have our spark particles and we have a shock wave. That all spews out from the middle. Now what I want to do to make this even more dramatic is basically copy this whole phase one and add a phase two. I'm going to copy and paste that. Rename it. Now in this timer, instead of a four, I'm going to change it to an after. And that after is going to let us control it. So I can say after a half a second, after the smoke is come and gone, after phase one is partly complete, because phase one takes three quarters of a second, we're going to go ahead and set off another shock wave and another round of sparks. And that will just make it more fancy and more cool. So let's go here. Click this. Oh, we're getting a bunch of sparks spewing out of there constantly. We want to fix that. Kind of cool, but not what we want. So it's not quite done yet. In this phase two, within this timer, I actually need to add another timer. So I'm going to put another timer right there, and then you want to drag this group of particles into your second timer. I'm going to close them up so we can see what we're looking at. I'm going to change this to 4.75 again. So that'll still keep our timing the same. As soon as you click the mouse button, it's going to play the sound. It's going to display the smoke for 0.4 seconds. Then it's going to also start phase one of the explosion and display that for three quarters of a second. And then it'll wait now a half a second before it sets off the second round of phase two that will then display for three quarters of a second. Now it should work as expected. So there we go, that's exactly what we want. We get the smoke, a round of sparks and shockwave, and then a second round of sparks and shockwave. Now one thing I don't like about this version that we have right here is that all of the sparks and shockwaves are the same color. So I'm not going to change it in this demo, but why don't you go in here and change your color of the second round of the shock wave and the second round of the particles to make them something a little more interesting, something more like we have in the version I showed you at the beginning of this video. I have multiple sets of colors of the shock waves and sparks. So you can take yours, you can adjust that, and use this to fit your needs. Hopefully that helps you understand particle effects a little bit better. I think I will come back probably with another tutorial or two about creating different kinds of effects, just to give you a little better handle on these settings and maybe show you how I work to uh, create some cool special effects. One thing to keep in mind is these particles when they're on screen and this is just a basic explosion here let's go to this one just because it's nicer to look at but all of these particles are just images they don't have any behaviors attached so they can't interact like if this were something where there was a wall here and you wanted these particles to hit it and bounce off they're not going to do that Particles in Game Salad are images only, and they can't have any behaviors attached to them. So just keep that in mind. If you're looking for something that's more interactive, something that reacts to physics, 
you would have to create particles yourself through behaviors, which I have done. It works great. Something you just have to keep in mind there is if you have a lot of those particles on screen that are actually actors, they can start to degrade performance. So you just have to be careful with that. You don't have to be so careful with the particle effects behavior because it's just images. So hopefully this helped you out and I will see you in my next video. I appreciate everybody who watches my videos. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. I'm always happy to answer questions and help out as much as I can. So uh, I'll see you in the next video.